challenge. I'm Leander Riley along with Bart Connor. Lisa Panzeroni leads Elizabeth Crandall as they head into their final event. The margin of difference is just point two, so nothing's been resolved here just yet. On the uh, men's side, it is Conrad Vorsinger over Brad Hayashi. Quite a hefty margin of difference here at 3.45. And right now, the men are ready to compete in their fifth of six events. This is the parallel bars, only the horizontal bar remains. While well, the women are waiting to compete on floor exercise in this, their final rotation. First up is Conrad Vorsinger on the parallel bars. This is his favorite event, and I've seen him warming up here. He has a really great routine, some interesting skills. Cast support to a pirouette. Good, Stutz. There's a move called a Diamondoff with an extra quarter turn, and then a glide on the side. Really good combination. Reverse Stutz to a straddle cut. He has a good look. He has a nice line in his handstand. He doesn't rush. He has a good feel for the rhythm and allows the... Oh, just short on the dismount. I think he opened up a little early because he had it going beautifully on that pike double back. That was a great routine until, until the finish. This is the Diamondoff with an extra quarter turn and he goes down the side and then glide kip on the side that's a tough glide kick to do in the straddle position. Right on up to handstand. And then on the dismount, I don't know what happened here. Pike double back, which is one of the more difficult dismounts being done. He has great form, and he might have just opened up a hair early because looked good in the air, but opening up early, of course, will keep him short in rotation. Conrad Vorsinger receives a 9.45. So you can imagine what he would have gotten had he landed a little bit better. Maybe 9697. Brad Hayashi is up next. Brad has had a really rough day in the four events that he's competed in to this point. He's had trouble on all of them. I'd really be interested to see here how he handles the parallel bars. He needs to settle down. I know he's been a little nervous. So far, this is good. Back toss, back toss. Yeah, back up raise, reverse stutz. Back up right straddle cut L. So far, so good. All right, he hit a routine today, and I'm sure he'll be pleased with that effort. That was a solid performance by Brad Hayashi. An indicator of what he is capable of, and I think his smile tells it all. Look how strong he is. He's only 17 years old, and the kid is really strong. He's flexible, he's talented. He's gonna be a great gymnast. Back toss, back toss. Two in a row, good combination. He'll clean up his form. He needs a little bit better look and a little bit better line. He kind of rushed this a little bit, but he's a good athlete. He knows how to pull that around, cowboy it, and make the landing. Good job for Brad. The score he wants to beat on the parallel bars is 9.45. That is what his opponent, Conrad Worsinger, received. I'm sure he'd like to take him in at least one event. don't envy the judges in this situation. Although I think basically overall it's a lot easier for the judges to compare gymnast A to, you know, to gymnast B as opposed to having 12 gymnasts out there and trying to figure out who's who. Not quite good enough to beat Conrad Vorsinger on the parallel bars, but certainly the closest run he's given him, 9.40 versus a 9.45 that Vorsinger received. And now the final appearance by Elizabeth Crandall for exercise.
comes back across the mat with round off back handspring, back dive roll with a half. That's a nice combination. the smallest gymnast in this U.S. challenge at four feet, seven inches. She does a pike double backflip here. Let's see what happens. I think she kind of coasted it. The mat's pretty springy, and I think she thought it was going to be just a little easier than it was. She was pulling it around. I don't know. Maybe she just didn't have the height initially. Wasn't a really strong takeoff. This next run was great, though. This is a tucked one-and-a-half twist backflip to a round-off full right to a punch front, and she continues through to a round-off back handspring back dive half. Really good combination. Her last tumbling run was a double twist. In order to be really competitive on the international scale, she's going to need to do double backs there. Score for but still a clean routine. Her score is 9.05. The judges, I think, may be a little harsh for... Well, that's a major break, uh, that, that first bobble. When you go down on your knees, that's a major break. So the rest of the exercise was clean and it looked good, but you have a major deduction right from, right from the start. Lisa Panzeroni has led throughout. And I don't expect that she's going to let up now. This is her favorite event, and she's really a very powerful tumbler. Well, the margin of difference between these two is not that great. It's just two-tenths of a point. Great opening tumbling run. This is a full twisting double back and a piked flip in the second rotation. Watch this. She pulls her legs around straight and makes it easily. Her second run showed really good combination tumbling. Round off back handspring whip through to back handspring tuck double back. Look at the form in the air. That's impressive. And the judges were impressed as well. The score for Lisa Panzeroni for her final performance on the floor exercise event. Well, there you see it. 9.75. She's the winner. 